Welcome to A State of Sight. I'm your host, Isaac Porter from Lowry Porter Ophthalmology, and this is your weekly update in ophthalmology and eye care, coming right here from Raleigh, North Carolina. In our last episode, we gave you the details about corneal high drops, which is a problem that can occur in patients that have keratoconus that can lead to swelling of the cornea, blurred vision, and pain. We've had a great response to that episode on YouTube and on Twitter from Keratoconus GB, and we'd like to give more details today about Keratoconus since we didn't cover very much in the last episode. You probably remember in Keratoconus, the cornea or the clear shield that covers over the front of the eye changes shape from a natural dome shape to progressively bulge forward into more of a cone shape. This can cause blurred vision and distortion in the vision that cannot always be corrected with glasses or contacts. Keratoconus happens in about 1 in 2,000 people, so although it's not very common, we do see it very frequently here in our office, especially since we specialize in cornea. It is always in both eyes, however, one eye may be significantly worse than the other, and to some patients that have a big difference between the eyes, their good eye or better eye may be closer to normal. Most of the time, the disease starts in the teens and then progresses into the 20s and 30s. The older people get, the less the progression is. There are a few diseases associated with keratoconus, like Down syndrome or Marfan syndrome, and in some cases, it appears that it's inherited or passed down from generation to generation. There's also a few eye problems that are associated with keratoconus, but frequently we see it sporadically or in a random manner. We do feel that patients that have eye allergies or rub their eyes a lot are at higher risk for keratoconus, and these patients are particularly at risk for high drops, like we covered in our last episode. Tests that we can do to help determine if someone has keratoconus is a mapping of the cornea or a corneal topography that can show how the curvature looks across the cornea and it will show any areas of steepness that may indicate keratoconus. Also, we can take other measurements to find out the curvature of the cornea. Initially, patients with keratoconus may be able to wear glasses but if this does not completely correct the vision, they may then have to go to contact lenses. If people have trouble wearing contact lenses, if they can't see well with the contact lenses or they don't fit well, they may have to have a cornea transplant in order to restore the clarity of their vision. This can be done with a traditional full thickness corneal transplant or with a outer layer corneal transplant preserving the patient's own inner layer which can decrease the chance of rejection, we think. There are other newer treatments for keratoconus including collagen cross-linking and intax which can be placed in the cornea and I'll give you more details about these procedures in future episodes. Thanks again for joining us on A State of Sight. As always, we hope to interact with you so please post your comments. Until next time, good health and good sight.